Hi everyone. Hello and hello and hello to everyone. Uh, today is the first of October, a brand new month, and um, we are three months old. The Seletar Foodie Show with Atul Akasha is three months old, uh, and uh, today is the eleventh episode. And um, I'm I'm quite happy because um, I I never thought you know it would um, uh, go the way that it has gone. Uh, though I had kind of a you know a plan for it any which way. Uh, I'm happy with the kind of enthusiastic participation that has been happening, you know, with the Seletar Foodie Show. Uh, I've had, uh, you know, people come from all different parts of, whether it's India, whether it's Goa, whether it's Mumbai, uh, of course, Malaysia. Uh, I've had guests uh, and friends coming in from Dubai, from Bangladesh. And now they log in every Friday at 7 o'clock to the Seletar Foodie page. The community has really grown, grown, and grown bigger, and I completely love it, uh, which makes me kind of, you know, uh, feel so good about the fact that I keep saying uh, food for world peace. And, and I think more and more we are all kind of getting very convinced about it that uh, uh, food is the platform for world peace. And at some point of time, inshallah, fingers crossed, I hope to get maybe, a, you know, a, a political figure onto the Seletar Foodie Show. To discuss food and to discuss, yeah, why not food for for world peace, right? And to see whether you know it is possible uh, to have you know important leaders uh, take uh, humane decisions that benefits community and society and the country at large on a dining table. Why not, right? Yeah, why not? If you believe everything is possible, so welcome, welcome, and welcome to everybody. On today's uh, episode, uh, on the 1st of October, a brand new month, the Stiletto Foodie show with Atul Dakosha has hit the three month mark. Hooray to that. Today is uh, episode uh, 11, which means, yes, uh, you know, every Friday we've had some fantastic guests and food entrepreneurs, uh, entrepreneurs, uh, food writers, uh, food journalists. Uh, you know, people who have uh, found, rediscovered their uh, second innings and reinvention, you know, you know of life in these COVID times, uh, you know, as a food entrepreneurs or found out their own calling, uh, taking the, their love and passion for food, you know, into making it their profession, a full-time profession, that too. So welcome uh, to the Stiletto Foodie Show. I can see friends popping into the chat boxes saying hello. Hello to everyone. Who are who are logging into the Seletar Foodie Show? Welcome, welcome, welcome to uh, October first, a brand new um, episode, and um, you know episode eleven uh, of today's show. Um, I'm going to just wait in just for a little while to make sure that you are uh, you know logging into the page. You are finding the Seletar Foodie page on Facebook and joining the page, and then watching, staying on to watch the show. I have two very exciting young blood onto today's edition of the Seletar Puri Show. Uh, uh, Shushruta Rishi is from Malaysia, and she runs this uh, lovely home-based uh, food enterprise called the Masala Chok. Um, I met Shushruta um, on you know one of those uh, uh, you know WhatsApp groups where all women meet and connect and talk and you know uh, uh, expats basically, and um, uh, Shushruta sent me this wonderful meal on my birthday, and uh, I had you know friends who had dropped in for lunch and to kind of you know uh, and to celebrate with me, and we absolutely loved her food, a very warm, heartfelt, very home cooked meal. Her butter chicken was awesome, so I kind of after the guests had taken spoonfuls of it, I sat down with it you know separately and I said, hands off, this is only mine, you know, belongs to me. And I sat down and I wiped it clean. So that's a masala chalk. Uh, and she will, you know, very shortly join us to talk about how even, you know, her food enterprise, you know, uh, gave uh, gave birth in Malaysia. I have this, uh, uh, another young gentleman from Mumbai who uh, used to be a hardcore travel professional, a travel enthusiast, you know, as, as a writer uh, and, and as a travel entrepreneur all over the place, you know, uh, traveling abroad and all that, you know, very firmly uh, established in the travel industry. And of course, you know, the pandemic happened, COVID hit, and, uh, you know, our whole worlds went topsy-turvy. But this gentleman, uh, Asim Hatangadi, 
of Bread Zeppelin. I, I love the name because it reminds me, you know, of Led Zeppelin. Right? All of us are rock fans. Uh, of how even this avatar of his happened, you know, from being a travel buff to being uh, the, uh, a bread guru, so to say, uh, and how his whole world has changed, you know, uh, for the better now. And he has all these awesome, you know, food-related workshops uh, that he conducts in Mumbai. Very interestingly, you know, kind of, you know, um, interspersing travel into his conversations because food, culture, travel, you know, if, if we look at it uh, actually, are, are part and parcel of the narration uh, because food, food is stories. And what is food without stories, right? Or where it came about. Uh, you know, right from the spices and the ingredients and all our grandmoms and, you know, our mums. Like I was talking at my book launch yesterday with uh, with my dear friend, um, Chef James Wan. You know, the measure of the hand, uh, how everyone, and I've seen my mum too, and I've seen my grandmom too, just went, you know, cooking into just using measure, you know, of just measure of the hand, right? No spoons and measurements, you know, that, uh, that we see in cook shows now. Just, and they just knew exactly how much was enough to, you know, whether it's, whether it's salt, whether it's chili, whether whatever that they put into the spices was just measured of the hand. And I think that, you know, um, is just awesome for me because, and they never went wrong with it. You know, they never went, went wrong with it. So I also want to ask uh, Shushruta uh, about her own stories, you know, of um, learning it from her grandma or from her mom or whoever that she kind of, you know, um, uh, saw food stories and food being cooked at home, uh, and whether it's the same kind of you know narration that she uses also. So hey, so I have Niloy Das from Mumbai saying hey 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 Niloy hi good to see you good to see you here on the show good to see Carmen on the show good to see Shraddha on the show yeah I can you imagine Shraddha it's three months uh, three months this is the eleventh uh, episode. I've had such great stories, such great, you know, uh, food entrepreneurs who have joined us from different parts. The food uh, show, the Selective Foodie show started sometime in July. Yes, when I was in Love One. And I think it just kind of, you know, took off from there. Uh, you know, uh, uh, friends of Sharda also have been on the show as, as guests. Uh, a lot of, you know, a lot of friends from Mumbai, from Hyderabad have also been on the show. Because the mission of the Selective Foodie show and it is a successful mission now, is to bridge Malaysia and India together. And by God, it's happening. You know, I have friends from both, both sides of the uh, Indian Ocean and the, um, the great, you know, I think China Ocean, South Seas, you know, uh, Chinese uh, uh, oceans. Yeah, South China Sea, uh, you know, joining forces across the spectrum. All my Seleta Foodie show, they've become friends. You know, uh, and we all wish and hope that uh, these bonds only strengthen stronger and stronger. So, welcome everyone to the Seleta Foodie Show with me, Ethel Lakoshta. Today is episode 11, and I have two young blood today joining us from Malaysia and from Mumbai. And um, as you find the page, you're all on the page. I can see the comment boxes are all buzzing, buzzing. Let me get my first uh, guest online. I have with me Shushruta, who's backstage with me, uh, the founder of Masala Chok. As I said, it's a big, fat Punjabi feast. I can't say wedding because I'm sure the weddings will take some time, you know, uh, to, to happen the way that we've known, uh, you know, weddings to happen. But um, if, if there's any big, fat Punjabi wedding happening in Malaysia, uh, we're going to make sure that, you know, Shushruta becomes part of it with the Masala Chok. So let me just bring her online. There you are, Shushruta. Peace. Hi. 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 And good evening. And good evening. Good evening. How are you? I'm How are you? Feeling? Thank you. I'm so thrilled to be here. I can't even tell you. Uh, thank you so much for having me here. My pleasure. My absolute pleasure. Your food yeah. was a huge hit at my birthday. Uh, you know, you. which was, uh, which was uh, I think, two Sundays back. Two Sundays back. Do I celebrated mm -hmm. it honestly for the whole month of September? You know, I said, <laughs> yeah, I do it every month. I do. It, I'm mean, sorry, every year because <laughs> I'm always so excited when September happens. All special uh -huh. people, I say, are all born in September. You know, mm -hmm. Zendaya, Beyonce, Michael Jackson, Woot Woot, and Ethel Dakosha. Yeah. 
So you're not to play Ranbir Kapoor? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I did not know Hard that. Food. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, yeah. so your food, your food was a huge hit. Everybody loved it. Everybody went through it right from the Gajur Ka Halwa, which I <laughs> sat down separately because I, I kind of saved it, you know, and kept it in the fridge. And then, you know, kind of very slowly went through it with my tea time because tea time has become very huge. It's very huge in Malaysia. And, uh, you know, I've, uh, I'm, I have I also enjoy my tea times now. So I kept the Gajur Ka Halwa, you know, for my tea time. I went through the butter chicken you know, like a complete sergeant, you know, goes through like, you know, like an army, right? Uh, and <laughs> I wiped it clean. It was so delicious. And mm. uh, all, my, all my friends, um, in some strange way, were all Chinese. And, you know, Chinese love Indian food. Uh, Correct. So it, do. Yeah. So they said, oh, my God, this is the best place to be today because there's so much of, you know, so much of Indian food. I had a lot of Indian food uh, on my birthday. So, yeah, Shushruta, let's just get straight in. Uh, let uh, you know all my friends and guests uh, uh, who are online buckle up. This is an exciting conversation, as we said. You know, it's a big fat Punjabi feast, and Trishuta has a lot of food to show us. So, if you have your cup of tea, uh, a cup of coffee, glass of wine, a can of beer, just pop it right open right now, and let's get straight into the conversation. So, Trishuta, yes. Uh, tell us about the masala chalk and how did it, you know, start? You've been in Malaysia for some time now, right? Uh, uh, you know. Yes, it's been five years now. So, um, uh, first of all, thank you so much for having me here. I am Sushruta, and uh, uh, my name is a bit too big, so you all can call me Sush. Mm. So that's what my friends and family call me, and I'm the owner of uh, Sush Masala Chalk. And uh, I've been staying here uh, for the past five years uh, with loving husband and uh, two beautiful daughters. Okay. And uh, they are 13 years old and nine years old, respect, um, respectively. And um, I'm honestly not uh, uh, formally trained in culinary arts, mm. uh, but I'm quite uh, confident about my cooking skills. Yes. Um, which I've learned from my. I will vouch. I'm vouching now for it. <laughs> I will eaten it. Yeah, please go on. Thank you so much. And um, at the same time, I love to amalgamate uh, um, different cuisines to bring out something different, uh, mm. uh, something of my own uh, whenever I'm in the kitchen. So I love experimenting with food as well. That's that's uh, where I come to come with uh, the fusion food concept that I uh, spoke to you about uh, previously. Yes. Yes. So uh, yeah, that's about it. And um, other than that, I simply adore food. And more than that, I uh, love feeding people with food. That gives me utmost joy and happiness uh, to my soul. I mean, uh, if you if I have to call it as my karma or dharma kind of a thing, I hmm. think uh, feeding people would be it. Wow. Okay. Strong words. Karma and dharma into into the. Uh, into the cooking of food are, are very strong spiritual words, right? Uh, uh, I was yes, actually. Uh, so, like you mentioned uh, before, uh, we are what we eat. It's absolutely true. Uh, yes. So, whenever we are cooking or preparing food, also our thoughts, our our uh, um, everything goes in. Our moods and everything it just goes in. Energy. So, I ensure whenever I'm prepare, preparing food. Uh, uh, for my friends or my family or for my clients, I ensure that I have uh, um, my Gurbani Shabbats playing in the background. I am okay. very fond of those. So the blessings also go in with that. Ah, nice. So, yeah, food is energy, uh, Shush. Uh, and uh -huh. I think, uh, yeah, food is energy. Also, what I've, I've, I've understood because uh, I've never cooked in my previous life, you know, in India. Uh, because there was always somebody else, you know, who would, who would take care of my kitchen in terms of sending us food. Uh, but now that I've come to Malaysia and rediscovered, you know, my whole uh, sense of being, right? So, so when I do my 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 little cooking, cooking at home, I mm -hmm. I actually I actually dance. It, it's like this one of those old, you know, uh, Spanish movies that I've seen where there's, uh, you know, she puts her all her hair up and you know, and she's in her short shorts, you know, uh, like a t-shirt, all kind of you know, bundled up, and she she dances as she's cooking. And then I suddenly mm -hmm. kind of found myself, uh, you know, doing the same thing. And I love it, mm -hmm. you know. My music is on. Yeah. Uh -huh. and, and I, as we said, food is energy. energy. Because I, 
yeah, you know, because when you're cooking, uh, you know, it is creation in that sense, right? Uh, and like you yeah, and 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 the taste also then accordingly, you know, is and is enhanced because or or is deflated depending on the mood of uh, you know of that you're cooking in, correct? But Absolutely. yeah. I'm, I'm, yeah, so so I can make out when you prepare food, your the food doesn't taste as good as 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 what it was prepared before. It perhaps mm. it was because of the mood swings or the feelings behind it. You know, the feelings, the intentions, basically, is what I'm trying yeah. to say. The intention has to be absolutely great when you're preparing yes. food. Yes, I completely agree. And uh, in my in my food writings, also, I keep saying, you know, that uh, food is is a relationship. Uh, that you're building between, you know, the, all the everything coming together like an like an orchestra, all the meats and the vegetables and the spices, you know, and uh, and even the in, including the flame, right? The flame of your, uh, you know, of of your gas stove because everything also depends on it. If it's high flame, it's burnt. If it's low flame, it's getting cooked. Yeah, you know, you always learn. There's there is no age to learning. I I I learned that. <laughs> so what kind of food? What kind of food do you cook, Shush? Um, uh, a whole variety, actually. But if I have to tell uh, about such pasala chok, it's about uh, typically North Indian Punjabi food that uh, I have grown up uh, preparing and eating. Mm -hmm. And I also do uh, fusion food. Uh, and I also do uh, South Indian food as well. Okay. Okay. All right. So when you're saying uh, Indian food, what kind would that be? Would you want to share a couple of names and stuff? Uh, that would be typical North Indian food. I would say dal makhani. I would say murg uh, uh, makhani and uh, uh, alukobi masala, rajma masala, amritsari chole bhature, alu tikki, Nice. Yes. Nice, nice, nice. So I can see that uh, that our, uh, our chat boxes are buzzing. So I'm going to include some of some of them into the conversation. So hmm. Jovita, Jovita De Costa from Goa, huge hi to you. Uh, and thank you so much, Jovi, for joining us. Jovi is an old college friend of mine. More power to Kamal girls. <laughs> thank you for joining in. Yeah, thank you for joining in. I have also um, Arun. I think Arun is here. Arun Hatangadi. He says, hi, Ethel. I'm a new member. All the best. Uh, Arun, thank you so much for joining us. And yeah, and Niloy sounds very excited. He's saying, hi. I said, hi, Niloy. Saying you know, stealing few minutes from work and great to see you, Niloy. Stay logged in because you know you're you're the guru of the Madhouse Social in Mumbai. There's a lot of stuff that we, we are we are supposed to be doing together. So stay, steal as many minutes as you can from work, uh, and stay online. So great to see you here. I have uh, my uh, one of my uh, BFFs from Labuan, Mimi, saying hi, Ethel dear, you look great. <laughs> Thank you, Mimi. I have Suchi Sharma saying hi, hi back. I have Kamlesh Sharma, Kamlesh Sharma also saying hi, uh, hi. I have Faisal from Bangladesh who is here. Where's Faisal? 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 Faisal says hello. Great, uh, you know, great to see you. And Faisal joins us every Friday uh, from Bangladesh. Uh, he he kind of sets a clock to to Fridays uh, and uh, Sundays heart to heart. So great to see him. Uh, thank you, Faisal, for uh, joining us. Uh, there's also Sunita Devdas. Let me get Sunita Devdas is also here. She, she says, hi, Shush, we're watching you, Jyoti, Swati, and me. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, thank you. You're my constant supporters. <laughs> oh, that's so lovely. That's Cheer so good. Yeah. That's so good. My my buddy, uh, May, is here. She's saying, oh, the yummy Indian food. Yeah. Uh, she was she was at my at my birthday you know my birthday lunch. May I told oh, you right? Yeah, I told you. <laughs> this is Shush Shushuta of Masala Chalk. Uh, you know you have other guests who are saying uh, we miss your food. Uh, you know the lot of lot of comments happening here. He's saying hi Shush. I had your food back in India. Trust me, it's yummy. Yes, as we said, you know Shush is amazing. Her food is addictive. Great feedback. Great feedback. Uh, somebody's also saying that she's the reason I'm fat. Okay, that's a huge compliment. <laughs> wow. So as you can see, uh, you know, Shush, a lot of feedback, a lot of buzz happening on the Celeta Foodie Show. A lot of compliments happening to your food as well, correct? And that is awesome because that is, you know, that is completely 
you know, uh, great compliments happening to, you know, to you and what you do at Masala Chalk. So what are your best sellers, Shush? What would you say are your best sellers? Um, at the moment, to be very honest, I've never had any uh, uh, bad feedback about any of my dish, dish touch wood. Okay. Uh, uh, but if I have to say best sellers, I would say Murg Makhni, I would say mm. Dal Makhni, I would say Choli Bhature, I would say Ras Malai, I would say Gajar Ka Halwa, I would say Alu Tikki Chaat, I would say Samose, I would say Veggie Crockets. I mean, the list is so long. I mean, I can go on and on. Yeah, and, and I think you also sent me uh, the samosas, you know, this cute little like samosa, it. which yes, can, you know, samosa. Yeah, I have, yes, because uh, that's the first thing that I tried myself before I, I you know, before we went into the, your entire, you know, uh, food mm -hmm. pile, as I call it, that you had sent me. Uh, and it was really good, it was really good, and I liked it. Mm -hmm. Are there also Absolutely. your best sellers which your, which your clients also like? Which, which are the dishes yeah. that get ordered the most? like frequent, you know, repeats. Like I mentioned, all these dishes and uh, along with these dishes, I would say uh, uh, there's a thing called pink pasta, which is quite... Uh, pink yeah, pasta. So it's a, so okay. it's a pink sauce pasta, mm -hmm. uh, where the white sauce and the red sauce is uh, mixed together, blended together with lots and lots of cheese and spices inside it. And uh, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's an instant hit with kids. So whenever I get uh, children's uh, birthday party orders, uh, it's a must. Ah, okay. So so May uh, May loves Indian food, and uh, you know, and, and she can go through it. She says, "Goodness me, if only I can order all." May, I think you can. <laughs> and call me, call me when you order. So if you need any help to run <laughs> through the food. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, somebody also uh, mentioned, I think your Bombay grill sandwich is also very good. Uh, oh, yeah. 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 Correct. yeah. And uh, there's also a comment saying that, you know, your peas paneer is also very yummy. Yes. Uh, paneer peas kurji. <laughs> yes. yes. And May says, but yes. Huh. Uh, so, so you have a diehard new, new customer. May says she's going to order uh, from you. <laughs> Thank you. I'm looking forward to serve you. Yes, you know, me as, yeah, you know, um, Shush, uh, Shush will drop her contacts uh, in the in the chat box, you know, in our comment box oh. and of course yes. order away. Uh, so, yeah, so, you know, Shush uh, getting into the, uh, into our conversation straight. Uh, we've been discussing this offline also between the two of us, you know. So when I came to Malaysia uh, and saw what is Indian food, you know, at the local mamak, right? Because they're everywhere. The local mamaks are everywhere. And that is your... Uh, that is your first introduction, you know, for anyone who's coming new into Malaysia, into, right. you know, yeah, into kind of, you know, the, the street version food, right? Mm -hmm. uh, cool. And uh, when everyone said it's Indian food, Indian food, and I was like, no, this is not Indian food. This is food from Tamil Nadu or food from Kerala because, you know, uh, Indian food, 31 states, 31 different flavors, and then you will have, you know, other 50 sub flavors within those, you know, 31 states. Uh, mm -hmm. And then they were like, oh, but we thought this is Indian food. I said, you know, but this is a part of India. Tamil mm -hmm. Nadu is a part of India. Kerala is of course, is a state of, you know, in India. And this is okay. their their version of food. So their version. Food. Yeah, you cannot bracket it, bracket it into, you know, Indian food. Like, like Punjabi food is a part of, you know, uh, Indian food, right? Um, so I'm sure in the five years that you've been in Malaysia, you've gone to the same conversation and the same, you know, misconceptions and stuff like that. What is your take on it? What is your take on the Malaysian version of Indian food vis-a-vis -vis actual, real, authentic Indian food? Actually, you're very right. When you go to Mamax or any other uh, uh, non-authentic uh, uh, a uh, place where people say that okay they sell north indian food specifically north indian food or indian food i mean there's a, a huge difference here people uh, in speci especially in malaysia people like a bit of sweetness in their food mm. so mm. in the dals also you will feel the sweetness which will come yes. from the condensed okay. milk that they will add or any of the curries um, it will not be that typical indian north indian food north indian mm. food uh, if I take you back, uh, please allow me to. Uh, North India specifically was ruled by Mughals for a long, long time. Correct. And, uh, and, and 
that's where the richness of food comes from when i say richness it will be cream it will be milk mixture so that's what's the base of our curries or our uh, dishes are back in north india so if you call if you say dal makhani it will be mm. uh, uh, it will be richness of uh, cream into it in the dal mm. makhani that that i'll be putting in or mm. shahi paneer or say murg makhani mm. so uh, just the tomato based gravy and put the tandoori chicken into it, it won't be called as a butter chicken or a murg makhani yes. so there has to be an amalgamation of the spices especially blended spices and the cream and the tomato puree Mm. I mean, there has to be a balance to it. Okay. And do you get your spices locally, or are do you, or are they you know are they coming to you from India? Uh, so, um, as as a habit, I would uh, every year I would go to India and get my own spices. Mm. But during mm. this COVID times, uh, obviously I couldn't go. It's been three years that I'm staying here now. I couldn't go back to India. So yes. I've been making my own spices now. and uh, whatever with whatever uh, locally available spices i have available here okay i'm i'm glad that you mentioned you know i'm i'm glad that you mentioned about north india and the entire influence of the moguls you know persian right because uh, that was uh, you know what it was because i remember um, when i first, when i went to delhi uh, uh, mm-hmm. some years back uh, i specifically asked my jono friends who, who were in delhi to take me to the old parts of delhi Uh, mm-hmm. you know the old old delhi is 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 extremely charming and uh, mm-hmm. and whoever has watched uh, delhi belly the movie right uh, yeah if if you're not careful i think you could have a delhi belly situation as well depending on where you're eating what you're eating right <laughs> yeah that movie was hilarious uh, so yeah so when i went to this old uh, old uh, side you know old part of delhi i remember mm-hmm. having the most delicious butter chicken ever of my life there in one of these old kind of you know corners very um, completely non descript in that sense but it mm-hmm. had this old you know old charm about it right you know from the guy you know right from the guy who was doing it uh, to the ones who were serving all the rotis and were getting made fresh onto the tandoor oven uh, and coming hot to you you know it was the most delicious uh, and succulent chicken uh, butter chicken my, uh, my mouth is watching now <laughs> uh, yeah so you know so so that part you know of uh, like how you mentioned and then you go upwards north you know to punjab every every part of punjab will have a different flavor of their own butter chicken correct do you miss home do you miss home i do i do that's where i've been born and brought up and i and uh, of course i do i mean my land is my land It, this is one thing that can't be taken away from me correct yeah yeah you know stalja right and uh, And and when you're cooking, do you have some good racy Punjabi songs playing in the background? <laughs> As I told you, no, nothing like that. It's only Shabad Gurbani that I play. Oh, okay, okay, that uh, sounds good. Yeah, sounds yeah. good. Uh, and uh, yes, yeah, sounds good. As I said, we have a very buzzing. You know, today we're we're really buzzing today because there's so much of uh, uh, you know um, all our friends, your friends included. and also asim's friends you know who are online too a whole lot of uh, you know comments happening which i will bring them online because i think okay. you know yeah what is fun for me is to kind of also include uh, all mm-hmm. our friends you know who make the time to come online so mm-hmm. you know somebody says uh, i guess is saying it's so difficult to choose from so many awesome dishes from indian to continental and beyond everything is finger licking good yes yeah i love that uh you know there's another comment which says not only is the food amazing shoosh goes beyond and uh, above and beyond to make every event special yeah i think i think you you used to do some catering also you were saying right yeah. so before covid happened uh, i was into uh, catering business as well catering as in uh, the whole uh, 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 the food with the whole setup so okay. with all chef and dishes and etc with the decor and everything i had done that as well okay wow on that note yes you know there's also somebody saying here um shush is a, is a rock star in all aspects yes i can see that because uh, you know uh, uh, yeah i i think of your your friends and fans totally love your food it goes without saying and yeah somebody's so, also talking about uh, talking about your pink pasta <laughs> being one of your favorites Great. i know who this is <laughs> <laughs> they're all online they're all online and it's so happy to see you know when uh, when your friends 
are supporting you correct uh, you're, yeah, I think absolutely. Yeah, I think that, that's that is, uh, feeling it is. It's, it's such a morale booster. And uh, see, at the end of the day, you have to work. It's only you who can work for yourself for your own good. But yes. it is so good to have uh, an army of people who's supporting you. Correct. Uh, you know, so that and they tell you that no need to um, get scared of anything. Even if you fall, we are there. Yes. So it's a huge like support. That. What else do you want? I love that. Uh, yeah, so uh, you, uh, I think your brand page is also online saying Masala Talk serves the best Indian food in KL. Yes, you bet. As I said, I, I endorse it. And uh, to, uh, to all your other new friends who are joining the Saleta Foodie page, I will request you that you join the page so that, uh, you know, when you comment, your name pops up. Uh, so I can see your names. You know, I can see your names completely online from our from my streaming platform. So, do join the Selector Foodie uh, page so that our community grows up. You know, and it really grows be much you know bigger in size and beyond because uh, the Selector Foodie page and Selector Foodie by default, uh, you know, we have a mission. Our mission, as as I said, is to uh, bring together people uh, from different parts of the world on a common platform. Uh, people who uh, truly find a kind of you know a, a spiritual emotional relationship with food uh, and mm -hmm. uh, as i said it, it is my mission to also kind of you know uh, make sure that we build this bridge between malaysia and india through food mm -hmm. why not right so Correct. do join yeah so do join the stiletto foodie page so i can see your names popping up uh, you know like proper names popping up and yes on that note i have another guest logged in from uh, from mumbai as I said, I met Asim on the uh, Madhouse social uh, WhatsApp group, which is all about, you know, all the uh, uh, mad food buffs from Mumbai uh, who are completely obsessed about food because, because I see the conversations that happen on that uh, WhatsApp uh, group. And that's how I met Asim. So, so uh, to tell our audiences, Asim has been a, a, a complete hardcore travel buff had a very solid profession, you know, in the travel industry. And when COVID happened and the pandemic hit, it all went Sunday, completely, you know, spiraled out of, you know, out of existence. But uh, as we will know, and Asim will share with us, Asim uh, uh, immediately reinvented himself, like most of us have done it, you know, uh, in these two, two years, as I would say, because 2021 is almost as good as over, right? And Asim reinvented uh, himself as a home. And we will get to know from him his own journey. Uh, being a home baker, his enterprise uh, uh, is called Bread Zeppelin. Uh, and I said, I found the name completely fascinating. And to take a line from uh, uh, Marie Antoinette, the very notorious you know, French empress who said, uh, you know, if you don't have bread, eat cake. I, I put a spin on it and said, no cake, eat bread, you know, why not? <laughs> All of us love bread, right? It, it is our favorite go-to, uh, you know, in good times, bad times, no diet, no diet. So let's bring Asim online right now and have him join us. Asim. Hello. 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 Good evening to you. Good, good evening to you from Malaysia. How is the weather How's in going? Mumbai? We're going. We're good. How is the weather? It's quite temperamental because it's been raining. Today we've had a good sunshiny day. Otherwise, okay. it's been quite temperamental. It's raining, it's sunny, but uh, it's good weather for bread. So I'm happy about that. <laughs> I think it's good weather for bread throughout the year, any which we are saying. There is yeah, never a bad. But in, in, in Bombay, sometimes the humidity tests you. It's like, you know, trial by fire. In other okay. cities in India, it's, it's constant weather. You know, when you go to Bangalore, you, it's going to be cool, constant weather. The heat mm -hmm. is like just a joke over there. But in Bombay, whatever it is, whether you call it the so-called winter or the summer, right now we're in October, so the searing October heat is uh, rearing up its head. Okay. So it's like, a uh, you know, if you're making anything to do with bread, mm. uh, this kind of humidity and this kind of uh, temperamental weather is like your, what do you say, uh, it can test you. Yes. It can make or break you kind of a thing. But it's, it's, it's a trial it's by like fire. A, it's like a bad <laughs> egg, right? <laughs> yeah. But uh, the good thing about bread is it's very forgiving. You mm. know, it never goes bad. 
it can mm-hmm. either over proof it can under proof but the proof is in the pudding as they say correct wow. right yeah wow so so yeah so from a from being a travel buff to to reinventing yourself you know as a home baker asim tell us all about this journey because this is such a interesting journey to know so uh, like you said ethel uh, i've been a travel professional a very passionate travel professional since uh, close to 18 years of my life now mm. and when the pandemic hit us uh, i had i you know i just sat one day like all my travel friends and said you know what there are only two things i can do right now yes either i can just sit and wallow in pity and say nothing is yes. going to happen the world is going to end etc etc or mm. second i can accept that the pandemic is hit what do i do to keep myself occupied or stimulated or revolutionize myself in a way without a thought yes so i said so once i had that in mind i was like okay i've accepted it the first part is acceptance once you've accepted it then it becomes much more easier mentally mm. so mm. then i said okay i've accepted it now now what do i do yeah and uh, like an answer to a question i happened because i'm a big instagram bro, uh, buff i happened to notice this uh, whole wheat bread baking course uh, over a, a period of two days on a saturday and sunday mm-hmm. by this really amazing chef called shriya shetty who is based in uh, mangalore okay uh, she is an amazing chef and bread is one of her forte's and she was doing this course so i said okay chalo let's i mean i, I literally have nothing to do right mm-hmm. so why not uh, learn something new so i ro- enrolled for the course and uh, from the f- i mean it was it was really good because uh, i have never heard of whole wheat baking because till then i was used to a regular pawala's bread or yes. the so called whole wheat bread which is not actually whole wheat because when you squeeze a bread you can make out how bouncy it is whole wheat mm. bread isn't so bouncy mm. so we used okay. to the packed breads and everything and of course since i was a travel buff i have eaten sourdough in many european countries in the us so i had a fair knowledge of good bread mm mm-hmm. so i did this course and it was an interactive course because um, you know the first part she told us about bread what is whole wheat how it can be a little temperamental how it's totally different from breads that are made with apf and other kinds of grains or flours and mm. she told us to make a starter and the next day once uh, we had it when she actually showed us four five different types of bread she made she told us exactly how to uh, bake the bread Okay. and uh, once the session was done she encouraged us to share uh, photos of the end result and mm. i was really happy uh, this was uh, i could this was in may of 2020 all right and if i show you the loaf of bread that i had baked that day and the loaf of bread that i bake today or maybe mm. uh, the, the latest one that i baked there's a huge uh, you know there's a world of uh, difference in that but it was okay. good it i mean yeah Uh, because of that i started uh, baking once a week on a saturday and sunday uh, while my wife was uh, sleeping after working from home she would be really dead tired she would be relaxing she would be sleeping i'm an early bug i'm a early riser i'd shut the bedroom mm. door put on my retro music and just go gotcha. baking and kneading the dough and you know the best thing about bread if you are really angry or if you are really stressed out the bread <laughs> results become the best that time <laughs> you know, it, it's an amazing thing whether it's mm. bread or anything because you're punching it you're taking out all your it's a punching bag yeah, yeah. It's a punching so the bag. bread is like okay punching as much as you want you know that's what i want that's what's going to make the flavor that's what's going to make me proof much better your your Correct. guest is going to have a good time you know yes. it's like no but, pain but, no gain yeah but asim i'm i'm very interested to know uh, you know why bread zeppelin as in like the name so the thing <laughs> happened so like i told you every saturday i would be in the kitchen at around 6:37 ist mm. listening to my music on uh, radio uh, by this amazing uh, uh, rj called uh, brian tellis and he has these ah. two hours from 8 am to 10 am brian is a buddy of mine 8 am to 10 am he is just belting out amazing songs and he yes, tells you a day good. or two prior i'm going to be i'm going to be uh, you know belting out songs from this band or these singles or the or yeah. particular theme on radio 1 so right i'm a rock on buff radio yeah radio on radio 1 uh, yeah 90 94.3 radio 1 yeah radio 1 so correct. i'm a rock buff i'm a mm. i'm a Me retro too. buff and whether it's my love for music or food all the good things in life it's all from my diet mm. so i mean the first ever song that i heard uh, i mean this kind of a song was uh, eagle was by eagles hotel california thanks to my dad putting in the cassette in the car when he dropped me to school so <laughs> yeah. yeah so i was 
so i was listening to a few of these songs and uh, that time there wasn't any idea at all that i want to go commercial it was just a loaf mm. of bread a week we would enjoy it for breakfast mostly or a mid or a mid morning or a evening snack that's it correct and then i would just keep on uh, what do you say i would just keep on experimenting with a few flavors it could be seeds it could be jalapeno peppers it could be sun dried tomatoes anything that came to this it was like dexter's laboratory you know what comes mm-hmm. just just put it in let's see what happens and then okay. i thought okay now i've got some hang of it hmm. uh why not go commercial I'll, correct what what do i do because see the thing is that the travel industry is a totally non tangible object you can't hmm. feel see taste it it's an experience but when it comes to food or anything edible it's everything tangible so it's like two broad yes. ends of the spectrum and i've yes. never sold or done anything commercial with food so mm-hmm. i mm-hmm. first i broached this idea with my wife and she being an amazing food blogger and a really great cook uh, herself said why not do it i mean what what do you got to lose you try Correct. it out see the result if people don't like it it's okay but at least it's better doing it than regretting later on and saying i had a chance but i didn't mm-hmm. capitalize on it uh-huh. yes yeah so mm-hmm. um, i said okay wow. now i want to wow. do it now the menu the name everything Correct. so for me it's you know if i think of something you know inspiration doesn't come it's like that light bulb moment what like they mm-hmm. show in tom and jerry so i had a very mm-hmm. few light bulb moments i said okay bread what kind of a name do i give like okay bread baker what what name do i give and i was like yeah. bread zep bread zep and i was like bread zep led zep and hey what how about bread zeppelin and Correct. that's how the name bread zeppelin came so i was just ah. you know brainstorming thinking aloud with my wife I said, okay, now this is good. So it's like a rock theme. Now mm-hmm. the names of the bread should also follow in that way, where the name of the bread actually tells the person what the flavor profile is or what they can expect. Okay. So for wow. example, okay. it could be, yeah, you know, like it could be like uh, cranberries. I mean, mm. the zombie. There's, I have a bread in my in my uh, menu called the uh, called the zombie. Now, oh. unless you are a, a rock fan, you won't know what the zombie is. Mm-hmm. so the it's basically similar it's just whole wheat bread flavored with cranberry juice and cranberries thrown in so okay. now you know there's a band called cranberries with their yes. uh, with their amazing song called the zombie so that's the connection that's right. so i always wanted to oh, i was very sure okay. that the name of the bread and the what goes in the mm-hmm. bread there has to be a connection not aimlessly right. just naming it because it's my favorite song i love that i love that i so love that so so that is a Yeah, so there's a lovely relationship, right, with the music and flavors yeah. and the different breads. You know of how they look. I'm sure you'll show it to us later on. So, how has the new journey been for you? How how has the new journey up in this in this new avatar? It's been good. Asim. It's been very hmm. encouraging, and people have been very supportive because uh, I had this huge uh, family on Instagram uh, who I made like I, like I was talking earlier where I did a lot of food workshops and everything related mm. to food and festivals who mm. I started calling the Insta fam Instagram okay. fam Insta fam yes and many yes. of them supported me as in ordering from me who were in Mumbai uh, if there were people who wanted to order from me but were in other cities would then speak to their friends and say you know what there's this guy you like this kind of bread order it from him i can't eat okay. it at least you do and let me know lasagna i i yeah. i Yeah, it's been more than a year now since I uh, launched on first of August of 2020, and mm. uh, you won't believe the minute I put out uh, the post on Instagram and Facebook, I was sold out for August. In, sold out in the sense I knew there's only me doing it in in my mm. home, in my kitchen at home as a home baker. I don't want mm. to succumb to greed, so I took yes. a number of orders, and that's it. Okay. And then I did the same thing a couple of days uh, in September later on, and it and it happened. and uh, the feedback has been good it's been very encouraging people liked it mm. uh, i have uh, myself gone all out to tell people in case there was any kind of uh, challenges they found with the bread sometimes it okay. didn't people don't understand what is whole wheat bread for me also it's mm. a new learning and mm-hmm. uh, they i told them please feel free to tell me because i take feedback as encouragement it only helps right. me improve wow. because i'm no, uh, you yeah. know all of us are learning uh, the lockdown right. has been a period of learning and it still is Yes. and uh, you know the, i always believe in a thing that every day you learn you get to learn something new correct wow that sounds uh, that sounds really good which means if if uh, you know for example just for example and and uh, and yeah. hear me out 
uh, somebody can even kind of you know uh, be inspired by uh, a particular artist's music uh, like right. for example david bowie right and say okay right. can you bake me you know uh, a bread uh, you know inspired by david bowie right correct right. and then right. you would probably kind of you know, sit down there and figure out whether it's going to be the star man whether it's going to be you know uh, the red shoes you know all his songs right and then right. come up with something interesting you know you know that is such an uh, that's a that's a good idea asim uh, you know yeah. to have music music inspired bread that somebody could order you know, even even for a yeah because you know. see i i started listening to music and music inspired me and was a source of inspiration for the names of my breads the menu mm. so to say the mm. name of the brand and uh, uh, i feel music is one thing that can bring people together yes you know? yes 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 correct and, uh, and uh, Correct. It's a happy right. space when you're listening to music and you're doing something that you like. It's like you're in your zone. It everything is positive, everything is fun, and uh, yeah. And and like uh, another thing I would like to mention is that while I'm going all hammer and tongs while I'm making the dough, my uh, my tutor, uh, uh, huh. Chef Shriya Shetty, actually said that talk to your bread. So I was like, talk okay, to your talk bread. to your bread. What do you what do you mean by that? So I said you okay. all, you heard of this thing where people talk to their plants and it seems hmm. it's supposed to be good for plants. I said yes, yes. I've heard of that. Yes. So when whenever you have a particularly rough day, in the sense you feel somehow the bread isn't, uh, you know, it's not it's acting up. It's being a tough cookie. It's being like one of those, uh, what do you say, one of those naughty kids in the class or something where the where the prefect has to come and give him a spank with his uh, ruler. Yes. Talk to the bread. <laughs> You know, and I actually started doing that, and in a few cases, hmm. it did work. I would say oh. stuff like in Hindi, I would say, "Kyu natak kar raha hai?" Acha. Because malu mein order ke liye jana hai baar. You know, it's yeah. supposed to go out. Why are you acting up on me? Come on, I'm giving you yeah. all my love with my hand. That's what you want. Do yeah. it. Come on, let's yeah. do it. I'll help you. And it drama. happens. Maybe drama take five ten minutes mm-hmm. more, but it happens. Drama bazi, drama queen kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> Right. On that note, um, there's a very interesting comment that's coming from Priyanka Naik Rishi. She says, "Great to see the connection between the songs and the ingredients. Very innovative. Yes. Thank you. Uh, I, I also agree because I think um, I think I think this is what you know. Uh, this is what is making a difference actually in the food industry because the ones who innovate right. yeah. and the ones who bring innovation okay. to the table, so to say, uh, I believe are actually uh, adding value. You know, mm-hmm. because it, it is different. It is creative." you know that you know he or she has kind of you know really applied uh, something of them of themselves to it and that is why you know uh, it tastes the way it does and it feels the way it does and you know and um, uh, uh, you know it it makes a difference right and, and it's a conversation food is always right. about stories right and conversation right yeah. yes on that note there's also another comment from uh, monica rishi saying Shush is the best, and Shush's uh, masala chok has the most delicious recipes, cooked with love. An amazing chef and a wonderful person. Way to go! I love this. I, I love haven't the had the opportunity to taste it, obviously. But the way Shush was talking about all the different things that she makes, my mouth started watering. I mean, yes, <laughs> perhaps I, I, I love stop Punjabi food in and Mumbai. For sure, we can have. We can yeah. catch up. <laughs> yeah, we'll come to Malaysia for a food exchange or something like that. That's fun. Come to Malaysia. Come to Malaysia. Actually, good idea. Yeah, yeah. come to Malaysia. One place I haven't been to, you know that. Yeah, it's I've beautiful. Tra- I've, I've transited through KL, but I've never had a chance to go to Malaysia. Beautiful or... country. Beautiful country. Yeah. Beautiful country. So, Asim, which which is your own personal favorite, you know, bread of all the, you know, of all the orchestra that you create? My personal favorite. Okay. Yes. So, um, my personal favorite is. Uh, while making it am i am i two favorites that's the stevet to heaven which is the seeded bread oh. which has all the different seeds and uh, the <laughs> the white raisins and everything okay and uh, it's called stevet to heaven i call it stevet to heaven basically because if you have that kind of a seeded bread which is like mm. really nice it will take mm. you on to the stevet to heaven so that's Ooh. my explanation for that and the okay. and the response to that has been good Okay. Uh, that's one of the best sellers on the bread. Then you have the Godfather, which the Godfather. is basically I call it the Godfather because it's an Italian loaf. It's got mixed herbs, it's got black uh-huh. olives, and it's got chili flakes. And wow. me being a Godfather buff, I had to call it the Godfather. I couldn't find any particular other name for it. Wow, wow, that's that's so those two are my personal favorite. That sounds good. 
Yeah, yeah, I love that. I love the fact that they have such, you know, awesome looking names. Awesome, awesome yeah. sounding wow, name. Sorry. So, Shush, yes, uh, you know, uh, everyone is uh, talking about your food, you know, simultaneously as we are having a conversation uh, on our chat boxes. And I can, you know, as I said, you know, I can keep seeing the comments going up and down. What do you have to showcase today and show us with, to share with all the Stiletto Foodie community online right now with us on this chat? Let's see that. Okay, let's start with uh, my favorite and very famous drink, which is uh, uh, rose lemonade. Rose lemonade. Oh, so okay. well, this is the lemonade, uh, Jaljira lemonade, and uh, with flavor of uh, rose in it, a dash mm -hmm. and a hint of rose in it, rose flavor, and uh, decorated with dried rose petals as well. So if oh you can God. see here. Yeah, I uh, know. Yeah. Can you? Yes, I can see it now correctly. Wow. Okay. It looks like that a looks margarita good. or a daiki or something like that. <laughs> That's looks right. really nice. I think all we can, you know, Asim, uh, all we can do if uh, if it is you and me, we'll add a dash yeah. of vodka to it too. <laughs> <laughs> no, count me in too. I can I add my gin to it. Yeah, that sounds good. That sounds good. Yeah, that looks good. That really looks good. You no, know, so in you. ice, so in uh, vodka. Yeah, sounds good. What's yes. what's our next one? What's our next one? Uh, our next one would be Murgmakni, if I can show you. Okay. Oh, wow, look at that. Here. Oh, uh, do you want to tilt a little bit to the yeah, yeah. to the to the camera? Oh, that looks good. That looks good. To all our guests online, I, I, I could just see that dish. put my hand in and like you know just take that entire platter yeah. right now. Yeah, <laughs> no, that chicken leg, right? Yeah. Can we see because that again? This, I'm going to be hungry. Sure. Can we see that again? Can we see that again? Definitely, definitely. Okay. Oh, that looks wow. good. So that it's basically nice. tandoori chicken. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, done in the uh, tomato based gravy okay. with uh, cream, lots and lots of cream, and uh, freshly blended spices, uh, okay. especially for uh, butter chicken or more makhni pie, call, call it like that. All right, okay, that sounds that looks really good. A very, so very this good. is my hot seller, uh, more mm -hmm. makhni. Another hot seller would be this beautiful, beautiful uh, okay. uh, sweet dish. Guess what it can be? Ah, oh my gosh. Rasmalai. Yes, that's Rasmalai. Oh, oh. Lovely. Oh Imagine my God. Imagine a swimming okay. pool of Rasmalai. It would be so good. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> that looks good. Damn, that really looks so good. You know, as I Thank said, it's, it's, it's dinner time in Malaysia. So, uh, you know, I, I can feel my taste buds have got activated now. They're saying, uh, okay. <laughs> That, that looks gorgeous, uh, Shush. Thank you hey, so much. Good. Thanks, thanks a lot. It hey, looks good, and yes, uh, as um, it's not just me and Asim's mouth is watering. The uh, the comments online is also a similar state of mind. I have one comment which is saying this is this is uh, Saman Saman Jaidi uh, Jaidi. He's saying this is torture. We can't eat it right now. <laughs> <laughs> I have, um, I think, Arav, Arav Banot saying, damn, Mood Makni looked mouth-watering. Yes, you bet. Absolutely. Completely. Yeah, completely mouth-watering. I have to find I someone who doesn't like Mood Makni. Uh, Mood Makni, if you're interested to know. Sorry, say that again? There's a little uh, story behind the Mood Makni. If, I, if, if you're a little bit interested yes. to know, or if you have time, time permits, I can share it with you. Please share it now. Yeah, if you can share it now. Murk Makhini oh. is not very old, you know, as, as it uh, seems to be. It is just 60 to 70 years old and it got invented uh, right after the partition happened uh, between India and Pakistan. Okay. And uh, this dish was invented by Sri Kundan Lalji, um, uh, who, right. is the, uh, who has this restaurant by the name of Moti Mehal, very famous restaurant. Hmm. So this dish was invented by them. Uh, uh, so it, it's perhaps uh, historically, if you look at it, it's it's not pretty old. Uh, it's it's quite recent in terms of the culinary uh, uh, cooking, if I put it like that. Okay, and yeah. uh, I'm I'm showcasing all the comments that are com coming on after you showed your dishes online. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, and there's also um, Arti uh, Surya Kumar who's saying the best ever rasmala you will ever taste. See, uh, it's the popular word. The popular vote is very strong. The force is very strong with you, Shush. 
<laughs> if you're all, if you're all Star Wars fans, right? Uh, Asim, correct. Right. Um, yeah, uh, you know, I have this constant as as we were saying, you know, sharing offline too. Bread has a bad reputation, <clears throat> right? Right. Uh, everybody wants us, uh, you know, about not eating bread because you know, oh, avoid bread. You know, dietitians and nutritionists and everyone will tell you the first thing that gets cut off from your list of uh, to eat will be bread. Oh. What bread. is your take? What is your take on that? <laughs> bread has See, a bad uh, like all like everyone talks about food. All the good mm -hmm. things in food or whatever people like always makes them put on weight. Yes. Right always <laughs> entices you temptation is bad as they say but it can also be good yes but uh, as far as bread is concerned yes i can understand when people say bread i won't say bread is bad because if bread made very well or made in mm. the correct way can taste mm. nutritious and it can be uh, it can taste good as well so for example okay. sardo bread why is sardo yes. bread becoming so famous because it's made in it's of course it's a tedious process but uh, it's it's a very temperamental bread. I call it the PhD of breads. Mm, but mm. Uh, you know, you talk about sardo, and then when you actually see the crust when it's bouncy, yes, that's the most amazing uh, feeling anybody can get. Uh, at least anybody who's into bread baking, when they see the crust bouncing like this, mm, I call mm. it like it's like a baby's bottom or a baby's cheeks. It's so oh, soft. Wow. So the way you make sardo bread is is a, it's a total science. It's 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 uh, very good in terms of nutrition because it's got a low glycemic index. Mm. It's very good for uh, diabetics. It's good for people who uh, uh, can't digest food really fast mm -hmm. because if you have a low glycemic thing, the food uh, you know it takes uh, the thing about and even my bread. For example, let's talk about whole wheat bread. Right. People say, oh, whole wheat bread. I've eaten whole wheat bread. But people, when they say they've eaten whole wheat bread, they're used to the packed bread that you get off the counters mm. in stores or something. But right. whole wheat bread is actually very dense. It can be made soft, but if you just have a couple of slices of whole wheat bread, you're full. Mm. It can yes. really fill you up. And the right. best thing mm. about it is uh, it goes under a bulk ferment. The longer you ferment your dough, the longer mm. you ferment your bread, dough, it's good for your health because it's breaking up. All the sugars mm. are breaking up. So mm. it's very much... It's, it's it's good for diabetics because there isn't that much of sugar formation. Uh, it fills you up. So you don't have the temptation to eat more and more. Mm. And uh, the good thing about bread is that it's, it's, it's uh, what you say, it's just like a potato, right? You can have it for breakfast, lunch, dinner, yes. in Anytime. between your meal. And yeah. like you said, that whenever you're, you had one of those days, you go for carbs, bread's mm. always there. Mm. Correct. Yeah. So, so, so like, like that, I was sharing... Yeah, like I was and, sharing. And bread is one thing where it adopts. It's very forgiving. You know, if like I said, if, if you suppose you feel you've done something wrong, you mm. don't need to toss it away into the uh, into the dust into the, into the dustbin. You can still have it because mm. heat and bread. If you combine them, it's like a marriage made in heaven. Correct. So mm. imagine the imagine uh, Shush's uh, uh, dal makhani, correct, or even the butter chicken. And yeah, right now I saw the butter chicken and I could and just like dunk my sardo bread that I've made right now into that and like it eat it. Because the thing about bread is it soaks in the it soaks in the curries or the gravies. And you know it's it's a it's a very Indian mentality where we're so used to eating Indian breads like roti <laughs> or parathas or polis. Mm -hmm. So we don't mm -hmm. associate eating an Indian preparation with bread. Hmm. But trust me, if you ever eat an Indian bread made well with any North Indian, South Indian, East Indian or West Indian gravy, even a dal, mm -hmm. it's amazing. It's amazing, mm -hmm. right? You you have some bread to show us? Uh, something of that? Uh, yeah. yeah. So I've Can made, you... so I've got two slices of these bread here. Okay. It's, yes. It's basically a sardo sandwich bread, which I got to know. I Does never, it have a uh, name? And, Does it have a name? Uh, I haven't christened it as yet. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the thing about this bread is that I made this fresh yesterday mm. and uh, you know this, this and I flavored this with uh, molga pudi which is like uh, the chutney the dry orange chutney that you get in South India so okay. I, I don't know whether you can see it but it's got a few uh, flecks of orange in in the crust mm -hmm. and mm. Uh, the thing about this bread is that it can be had as regular sandwich bread it's not as mm. tedious as making a regular uh, sardo bread. Mm. 
where you need to mm-hmm. do a lot of folds and stretches and stuff like that. Yes. Three hours, less, very less effort. Uh, it's not jugad, by the way. It's it's hundred percent of actual good <laughs> recipe, but uh, it's uh, less it's uh, less uh, time consuming. It's less effort, mm-hmm. but uh, mm-hmm. the result is amazing. Like yesterday when I baked it, and another thing that we bakers like is when you see that oven spring. When you see that yes. uh, center of the bread rising up like that, it's Correct. like you know, it's like as if your it's like as if a edible kid is born. For loss of <laughs> better words, you know. Wow! And, this, and the entire house is smelling of butter, and uh, you know the bakery yes. kind of smell yes. that you get. Oh it's, it's 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 addictive. divine. The the baking uh, uh, the the fragrance of the baking kitchen is divine. It's just so yeah. divine. Yes, sounds sexy to me, very yeah. really. It reminds me of airport lounges where you think where you can hear where you can oh, smell yeah. a nice coffee being made with a nice yes. Italian ciabatta or something like that. Yes, that's that's the kind of stuff. Yes, yes, I I miss those. I miss those little escapades, right? Especially yeah. when you're waiting waiting in the lounge, you know, to catch your flight. That in between. You know, being uh, on Earth and waiting to kind of you know to fly off. Yes. And have you noticed one thing now that you spoke of lounges? At least I have noticed this phenomenon. Very close. Do uh, do you realize why all the coffee shops or the lounges or most of them are so uh, strategically placed close to the exit or the entry gates? Mm-hmm. Because you have half an hour, and you don't you don't know what to do. People may yes. don't people actually may not need that sandwich or that croissant. Or that cup of coffee, but it's a psychological thing. I have half an hour to do. What do I do? Where do I wait? Yes. Go into the coffee shop. You get this <laughs> whiff of a cappuccino, of freshly <laughs> baked bread, and that just entices you to go in. Yes, yes. correct, <laughs> correct, correct, correct. On that note, uh, I think I think your your baby's bottom has uh, hit uh, a lot of a lot of you know soft spots everywhere. Uh, Arnav is saying, "Dude, I'm in love with the names of your breads." Correct. Thank you so much. <laughs> Yeah, I have uh, Neelam Rishi saying baby's bottoms. <laughs> what a comparison! <laughs> Lovely. Yeah, I like it too. I like it too. And yes, uh, you know, uh, to all our friends who are online on the Selector Foodie Show today, as I said, you know, join the page uh, so that your names pop up uh, in all your comments, and I can see them backstage. Uh, you can find, uh, you know, Shush's uh, Instagram handle. Shush, what is it called? What is the Instagram handle called? Mm, it's Masala Chalk. Uh, so, masala chalk by Sush. So if you type in masala chalk, uh, Sush masala chalk will be coming. Uh, will okay. pop up. So that is her Instagram handle. Asim, what is your Instagram handle? It's at the rate that punny boy. The punny boy. P U W N boy. That punny boy. That punny boy, which we will also drop in into our comments uh, in our comment section. Find my handle uh, uh, on Instagram at Ethel the Koshta. A lot of stories that happen on a day-to-day basis around food, lifestyle, you know, travel. Because you know we are still uh, global global nomads and gypsies, as we call ourselves. So find us, log in, become part of the community. Um, Shush, my question to you: uh, mm-hmm. What 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 is your um, you know what is your own contribution? We have had a fantastic conversation now. What is your own contribution to ensure? That Malaysia gets to experience authentic Indian food because you know we um, have a, a lot of back 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 stories to it, right? What would be your correct. contribution? Correct. So, if I call it as a mission, the mission would be uh, to encourage people to enjoy cooking with uh, 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 with simple recipes, with keeping health and nutrition in mind. Okay, that's that's what uh, uh, my motto is, and the mission is that only. And um, at the same time, uh, we are in. Uh, I mean, if I call, uh, if I, if if I put my business, um, if I F and B business specifically, we have a lot of curries and uh, gravies going in as as um, as food dishes. Mm-hmm. So another step would be uh, to go for the biodegradable uh, boxes. Uh, okay. Going absolutely uh, uh, from zero to no plastic, mm-hmm. and uh, for example, for uh, my uh, sandwiches and my breads and all, I've started using the beeswax, uh, the beeswax wraps. Oh, lovely! Lovely. They are absolutely. They are reusable. The clients uh, are so happy to receive them because even they can reuse it, wash it, and just 
use it and they're as good uh, um, to use that as it was uh, sent uh, to them on the first day. Okay. So if you, if you need uh, anyone, uh, because uh, you know I I have a friend of mine who mm-hmm. does um, uh, who does broken rice and tapioca straws. Yes. Uh, oh, wow. Yeah, and uh, which you can eat, correct? Because uh, uh, right. we realize in Malaysia that the garbage, plastic garbage pollution is massive, massive. Mm-hmm. It ranks, mm-hmm. I think, fifth, fifth or something like that globally. And, mm-hmm. uh, you know, and the oceans are polluted, uh, the rivers are polluted. Or because, you know, all the single-use plastic, I think, is extremely dangerous. And a lot of mm-hmm. it is coming from the food, from the food industry, the single-use, mm-hmm. right? You just eat from, uh, you know, right. from a food pack and you just dump it out right. and that's all adding on and on and on. So this is hers, you know, uh, Cecilia. Her name is Cecilia. Her brand is called Eda Straws, uh, A-D-A Straws. If you need, I will connect. Reminds me of a song, Cecilia. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I will connect the two of you because, you know, her straws are now being uh, used everywhere. It's fried, it's broken rice and tapioca uh, straws. And they can be used. Yeah, you know, as you use it, drink through it, you know, and then just you can munch it. Or you can break it, and you know, uh, you know, it, it it'll break down. You can put it into the soil, you know, uh, it, uh, you know what I'm saying, right? It is completely right. biodegradable, so there is right. no wastage of it. Too. And I'm sure, you know, Asim also, uh, you know, your, your own way to also ensure that you become a very conscientious, you know, food entrepreneur in that sense. Because I think all of us have a responsibility, right? Right. To make sure that our passions, uh, you know, also supports the planet, you know, uh, right. in the in the larger scheme of things, right? Wow, right. this is right. awesome. This For is the really customers, good. another thing very important that I take, take care of is the quality of the food which is prepared. Okay. Um, starting from the oils to the freshly grounded spices, hmm. uh, to the packaging, uh, everything, uh, you know, you're, you're the sending the food and um, in such a way that you are only eating it. I mean, yes. uh, right. it's it's not a, um, a food prepared in a, in any restaurant where the oil is being reused. Uh, for example, here in Malaysia, palm a lot of palm oil is used for cooking, which is not good and healthy. Yes, absolutely. And, yes. Uh, in my cooking, I'll be using clean oils. For example, for a lot of my uh, dishes, I use uh, 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 olive oils mm-hmm. and kandla oil. And the oil is um, the quantity of oil. Also, the dishes are not greasy, and yes. uh, yeah. so health is also taken care of in that uh, perspective. If I have to put it across like that, correct, correct. So, I, so I had this doctor, uh, you know, that I interviewed uh, some uh, a week back or last month, who prescribed mm-hmm. very strongly that the uh, that the Mediterranean diet is the best diet in the world, which mm-hmm. ensures uh, you know complete holistic uh, health. Of the body, mm-hmm. including you know anti-aging as well. So he strongly recommends uh, you know the extra virgin uh, olive oil Not as oil. the best uh, as the best oil to be used you know in cooking. And very interestingly, you know I also want to kind of have this conversation of um, to see whether extra virgin olive oil is comparable to Indian food in some other show of mine, because uh, the mission, like I was telling Asim, the mission is also to use the Selector Foodie Show. Uh, to also, uh, you know, as a form of empowerment, as a form of education, as a form of awareness as well. And yeah, food for world peace. Why not? Why not, okay. right? Yes. So what is what is your take on that, Asim? <laughs> so for me, uh, it's been, like I said, the pandemic slash the lockdown has been uh, a time of learning for everybody. Mm. You, mm. Sush, me and all of us. Correct. I mean, the biggest learning I got was I never thought I would do anything to cook and to actually do it commercially. But hey, I'm doing it right now. Correct. So that's just one bit of it. But I've realized because of uh, all these different people, different uh, personalities that have been speaking to when it comes to their own cuisine, their regional yes. cuisine, because people have started accepting your own regional cuisine yes. or Indian food. People have started understanding what is actually Indian food instead of just bracketing it under that uh, topic of Indian food. Yes. Uh, after speaking to them, attending a lot of courses, uh, whether it's bread baking or just uh, how food is influenced by different uh, things in the world like archaeology or history or sciences. Yes. You mentioned that. Uh, yeah. I've just realized that there's this term called commensality, which mm. in, in layman's term means if I eat 
food prepared by you if i eat food prepared by sush or i eat food prepared by any one of any kind of race caste creed anywhere in the country it could be a right. villager it could be any one that is the biggest form of unification correct and if i'm not mistaken this uh, the biggest uh, propagator the first propagator who started commerciality was uh, guru nanak dev mm, okay okay and okay. Uh, one of the one of the 10 uh, the first uh, sikh gurus who started uh, this entire thing mm. i happened to read up i was just reading up about him and uh, there was this incident uh, maybe i am not uh, i am not getting the facts together but what i remember was there he was outside a temple and i think there were a few people outside who couldn't uh, get the food that they were serving in the langar or something like that and mm. he gave his own food to the person instead of okay. him eating it he gave a portion of mm. it or he gave his own food and the and the guy over there was uh, you know from a uh, maybe from a lower caste or whatever uh, it was from a totally different community and he was quite surprised as in you know aap khana kha rahe ho aap why why are you giving it to me so it's like mm. khana hai usko kaise pata chalta hai ki kaun khane wala hai correct food is going inside you and yes. you know the way food is served the way it's made the mood that you are in i feel it totally helps in uh, in enhancing the properties of food yes and on, on on a on a world stage also i feel if people just sit down and eat food it can correct. solve almost all the problems in the world i'm, tell, I'm telling you people Absolutely. will become less judgmental about each other that is why i say food for world peace because you know like you rightly said it uh, mm-hmm. it, uh, it it has no distinction of caste creed race gender anything of that sort where you've come from you know whatever right get all yeah. these guys all these world leaders to sit on one big huge table serve them the best of food and say now you make decisions on that um, you know on that note we're almost coming close to uh, you know our show too i have mm-hmm. raja baby here Uh, online with us who says uh, who agrees you know, about our take on plastic right he said food in plastic is extremely dangerous hence awareness towards food packaging is very important i completely agree and i think the onus mm-hmm. of being uh, accountable responsible you know food entrepreneurs also lies on our sh- very strongly on our shoulders to make sure okay. one what are we feeding uh, you know what are we feeding uh, the people who are buying from us and uh, you know uh, how are we how are we packing the food right Uh, right. So, if anybody has any questions to ask, please drop a question. Uh, you know, in the in the in the comment boxes, to to ask whether it's whether it's to me, whether it's to Shush, whether it's to Asim. We're more than happy to answer it. So, drop it right now because, as I said, we're uh, running short on time too. And I think Asim had a question. Uh, you know, Asim, can you fire the question away? Yeah. So, Ethel, I was quite curious about knowing. Uh, how you landed up in malaysia what are you doing in malaysia because my, the thing about me is that whoever i interact with and if there's mm. a relationship as a friend or any kind of interaction i'm quite curious about what they do and if uh, they aren't in the country that i am in what is how did they land up over there out of curiosity and just knowledge i guess correct so i think i'm right now i'm building uh, uh, you know trying to build world peace maybe at least between malaysia and india <laughs> Through, through the medium of food, I landed in Malaysia. Uh, actually, I was introduced to Malaysia uh, by the uh, Ministry of Tourism Malaysia in okay. November 2019 when I was invited okay. as part of the Media Fam trip when they just okay. launched their Visit Malaysia 2020 program with some 16, 17 journalists of you know lifestyle journalists from different parts of the world. And I accepted the invitation. I flew from Mumbai to Malaysia. My whole life changed because uh, I never expected Malaysia. to be what it what i saw you know because i'd heard so many different other you know kind of stories and stuff i completely fell in love with malaysia and i you know i and, and i made a promise to myself and uh, ethel dakosta keeps her promises to herself you know i made a promise to myself you know i remember standing at the pavilion which is a big huge fancy mall at bukit bintan that i was going to come back to malaysia to make it my second home or to oh. you know, yeah to make my to rebuild my life as a second innings you know after doing everything awesome. else that i had done yeah i went back to india i felt completely out of place uh, as if like what am i doing in india i don't belong here you know that kind of feeling that from a very like a deep, turning point kind of a moment yeah yeah completely you know when uh, from a deep spiritual emotional kind of you know uh, calling if right. we can understand that right that happened uh, to me 
I went to Malaysia, uh, I went back to India, Malaysia then called me back again in February 2020 on mm -hmm. another media mm -hmm. trip, uh, you know, and showcased uh, Sabah to us and stuff like that. And I stayed back just to kind of suss out, you know, whether it's really, uh, am I, it's just an infatuation or am I really in love right. you know, with the country in that sense, right? I stayed back, I was completely 200% convinced that uh, this, this is what I'm meant to do. And this is why, the, you know, I'm feeling such a strong spiritual call happening with this country, which I That's never nice. even knew, you know, yeah, that way. And I went back to Mumbai, Asim, and I packed everything. I packed wow. my life, uh, you know, in 25 boxes, which is still in a warehouse in Bandup. <laughs> I, I packed up, you know, I had such a thriving, you know, lifestyle media company, Thinkik Media. I finished up all my client assignments and I said, okay, I'm just doing this. I'm just listening to this uh, call and I'm going. And I said, COVID or no COVID, you know, I, I was not bothered at all. You know what I'm saying? I just packed yeah, yeah. up an overweight, you know, suitcase, luggage, where I paid extra <laughs> at the Malaysia airport. You know, they were like, everyone comes overweight. You are going overweight. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I just knew, you know, I just knew that my life was, you know, was going to be, was going to change massively. Mm -hmm. And I was getting ready for it. And that's right. it. Uh, I came into Malaysia. I had a written ticket to India back, you know, in a month's time to go finish up and come back. And and the, the lockdown happened, right? And like the borders shut, the airports shut, everything is still shut in terms of India, Malaysia. And uh, I have never looked back. I said my whole life just changed 360 degrees. The quality that's of my commendable. life. I mean, it takes a lot of guts to do that, seriously. Yeah. And that's you know, my, my mom had no clue what was happening. She was like, you know, just do whatever makes you happy. And uh, I have been the happiest ever in my entire life as I am now. It's a, it's a state of, uh, yeah, it's a, nice state of bliss. it's a state of bliss, I call it. I found wow. my, yeah, I found my own spiritual calling. I found my own quality of life. Oh my God. I mean, what was I doing all this time? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and, and of course the uh, books. Everything are, happens at the right time and, and uh, at the yes. right place, no? Yes, yeah, yeah. I was, uh, I think, I you know, so, I, yeah. was, I was prepped up and then, you know, boom, it just happened. And of course, you know, the Stiletto Foodie book just happened out of the blue. All my writing, food journalism. I was never a food journalist in India at all. My food journalism happened in Malaysia, which is like unstoppable. Mm -hmm. It's like insatiable hunger for food in that sense, right? And I, this is such a deep spiritual and emotional connection. I've met such fantastic chefs in Malaysia, you know. Uh, so the whole food industry kind of, you know, just opened up, welcomed me, like this long lost prodigal daughter <laughs> who had come back, so to say. Yeah, and that's it, yeah. Asim. You know? yeah, that's awesome. it. Really yeah, nice. I, I, feel, uh, I feel so happy, you know. I feel so happy to kind of, uh, uh, for, to Malaysia for... Uh, for calling me, you know, if you know what I'm saying, right? For calling to, yeah. you know, and actually kind of, you know, coming here and, uh, you know, kind of putting my whole life into perspective. So I'm, when I met right. the tourism minister, you know, she had like this long, uh, you know, like a thank you that she said to me, uh, like a good 10 minutes of saying thank you, you know, for how much you've done for us, you know, mm -hmm. right. in that sense. You, know, you came to Malaysia and we are so grateful to you for the, stories that you are telling about Malaysia to everyone, internationally, mm -hmm. yeah, in That's India, nice. all your readers. And now you have a book happening. She's endorsed the book also with a foreword. All my friends, please buy my book. <laughs> you know? Definitely. We need okay. a signed copy. Yes, of course. Yeah, I would be more than happy. <laughs> and all the stilettos, foodie, you know, offshoots happen through it. The stiletto foodie soirees, you know, and restaurants. And the Stiletto Foodie Show, you know, that is now uh, going so strong, but with a mission to bridge India and Malaysia through conversations like this, culture, okay. travel, okay. people, okay. entrepreneurs, because both the countries have a, have a blood tie, if I could use that word, because 10% right. of the Malaysian population is also Indians, right? right? Uh, and they are like second generation, third generation Indians who came to Malaysia and settled in and could contribute actively to the country, uh, the country mm -hmm. in that sense, right? Uh, right. So I, I mean, maybe it's, it's a mission for me to tell those stories as well, to narrate those stories. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so Malaysia Tours mm -hmm. are very happy. Uh, the Indian Embassy right. in Malaysia is extremely happy because they track and trail all my work. 
and that's uh -huh. it. That's my that's my journey. You know, Super. that's my journey here. Yeah. So nice, so nice, and it's a beautiful one. Yeah, I love it. I completely love it. You know, and all our uh, people who are online, who are uh, you know, like uh, uh, Shamini Anthony, who is online right now with us, just saying, I love the topic, guys. He's saying food not only connects us all, but it truly brings the best out of us. Yes, I completely mm -hmm. we all completely agree. Uh, through cooking, community ties, friendships, and discipline are strengthened, and individualism is you know is diminished. Is diminished. I think right. it's a balance. Okay. I think it's a balance. She said, "Food crosses all borders, allowing people from all around the globe to interact, grow, and of course eat together." Shamini, you couldn't be more. Yeah, you she couldn't the be. Nail on the head. Completely bang on. The nail on the head. You know, yeah, bang on. Uh, you know, you're so right. Uh, my friend Mimi in Labuan, she says, thank you, Ethel, for the wonderful remarks about my country, Malaysia. Uh, saying, and of course, you know, you, know, I, you know, I never forget to mention Labuan because I think Labuan is like a little mini, mini Goa. It, you know, it's just, it's just a very happy uh, state in Malaysia with all the happy wives, which reminds me completely of being uh, back in Goa. Uh, correct. And yes, everyone endorses that food is for world peace. So great. I, I, I love this. Yeah, I love this. She said, food connection between communities do enhance comfort level to visit a different country. Yes, and whoever mm -hmm. is online with us, it's an open invitation to each one of you to visit India, catch up on Asim in Mumbai, and all the Indian foodies, you know, that I've been introducing on this Latter Foodie show, because I'm sure, you know, uh, uh, we build such great relationships to, to food. So, yes. So um, everyone is uh, everyone has a lot of compliments uh, on our uh, comment section. Uh, you know, Arnav is also saying. You know, um, uh, oh, Arnav has a question to, for us. He says that, uh, this is to all the three of us. Which is your favorite Indian dish? Oh my God! So uh, let me go first. So I think my favorite <laughs> Indian dish. Uh, um, wow, uh, it's, I think it's undoubtedly a, a mutton biryani. You give me a good mutton biryani, and I can single-handedly Go through it. Completely <laughs> go through it. Yes. Shush, oh, what, is your, yeah, what is your favorite? Uh, favorite uh, I would say mulk makhani and dal makhani are my go to. They are my comfort food. Comfort okay. food dish. Yes. Okay. Asim, what about you? My go to or my favorite. So I, I can't say I have a favorite as such because I, I just love food. I can eat any kind of food. But uh, when I'm like, I have a you know, I need my downtime. I have not had a good day. It's been one of those days or I've had too much of rich food or food outside, curd rice. Give okay, me curd, curd rice time. with pickle and some uh, crispy stuff at the side and a piece of fish and I am sold. That's okay. that's like a reset for my palate. Wow. Sounds amazing. As I said, everyone's mouth and mouth is watering right now. <laughs> because there's so much of food that we, uh, that we have discussed. On that happy note, I think we've crossed way beyond our, uh, you know, our uh, timeline. But I'm so happy we've had this conversation. I'm so happy that Shush made her, made time. I'm so happy that Asim made time in Mumbai. We had uh, great conversations around food. We've excited everybody who is online with us also kind of, you know, to appreciate our own food cultures, you know, and uh, our own, as I said, responsibility to ensuring healthy food, safe food, you know, in terms of creati creation, packaging, and putting it out there. Uh, I urge each one of you online, um, you know, join the Stereotype Foodie community, join the page so that every time, every Friday at 7 o'clock when we meet with such exciting food stories, I see you and we're all there to support each other in growth, you know, morally, you know, yeah, build this, uh, you know, this relationships across two countries, you know, through food and yeah, food for world peace, guys. That is it. Totally. Yeah. yeah, yes, please. Totally. Yeah, you know. Here, here, as I said. Uh, and uh, Asim, great job on your bread zeppelin. My congratulations Thank you so to much, you. Yeah. And uh, as I said, you have to create a dish inspired by David Bowie. You know, and um, who else have I said? And he's all my favorite 80s. David Bowie, Duran Duran. You know, I kind of I still love their music till today. So inspired by that, create something, right? And tell me what it is yeah. named. That would be good to stimulate the creative juices. I could do something like that. Yes. <laughs> and shush to all your masala chalk, correct? Um, you know, great power to you. 
uh, I Thank look forward to us meeting together now that, you know, phase one, phase two, and phase three is all kind of happening in Malaysia. And okay. having, uh, you know, taking this conversation online, offline, preferably with common, common friends or doing maybe, you know, a, a potluck at my home. I love potlucks at my home. Everybody Absolutely. brings Absolutely. I'm on for it. Anytime, yeah. anytime, just let me know. And, you know, and also kind of, you know, introduce you to people you know, and things like that. That's so awesome. Nice. Awesome. Yeah. This has been. I have a great... different thing on potluck because, huh. <laughs> because in 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 Konkani, uh, as you know, Ethel pot means stomach, right? Yes. So in Konkani, <laughs> for uh, we call stomach as pot. So for me, potluck is that. Like we're lucky, we have a nice pot and put yes. all the potluck food in. <laughs> <laughs> and have the big bellies, right? And then leave yeah. for home. Wow. On that great, happy but, note. Uh, thank you so much, Ethel. Thank you for having us. And it was a great opportunity to come and speak about uh, and just share our views. And uh, thank you for giving us this platform. It was it really meant, means Absolutely. a lot. Yes. Absolutely. A second, Naslim. And another thing I would say that uh, for message, uh, a small message for everyone who's listening uh, is that chase your passion and uh, think big. Yes. Uh, and, and chase your dreams because start small if required. And because once dreams and efforts come together, then sky is the limit. I, I think then uh, everything is possible. I, the way I, I started my business, the way Asim started his business, I think uh, both of us can connect on this that we started small, but by God's grace, uh, we have a vision for our brands now. Yes. Right. That is so good. Yeah. Absolutely. That's so good. I, I think that is that is what it is, you know, whether it's in life, whether it's in love, whether it's in relationships, correct? Don't go True. half, half ass. Go full. Full. Go full yeah. in. So it should be all in or all out. This uh, half ways, you know, don't work. They don't work at all. Correct. They don't work in life. They don't work in love. They don't work in relationships. They don't work in professions. So no half ass business guys, you know, all <laughs> all. Full in or full out. That's it. No halfway. On that, okay. on that great empowering note, Shush, my love to you. Thank you for making Thanks. the time. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks. To, Thanks to for Asim, having me. To Asim. Thank you so much. Rock Mayor on. Kitchen, yeah, rock on. Mayor yeah. Kitchen <laughs> buzz. Mayor <laughs> Kitchen buzz with music. Made buzz yeah. with great, uh, you know, great concussions. Thank you so much, and, and concussions and bread, correct? Bread is a good Thank word. <laughs> And on that note, let me say uh, bye-bye and good night. Yeah. Share the video uh, with everyone in the, because there's yes. a lot of you know uh, there's a lot of eyeballs that we get you know in replays. So I keep the faith, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Today. Thank you. Love and peace, to all. Take care. Take bye care, guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Good night. Good night. Wow, this is a, this was an exciting conversation today. I love the participation. I love the fact that everyone came from different parts uh, of both the, both the sides of the country. Uh, I love your participation and I love the feedback and support that I get on the Savannah Foodie Show. I urge you again, go on to my uh, Instagram page at Ethel Lakosha. Join in because a lot of food conversations happen there. All my interactions with food entrepreneurs, my experiences with food, and the wonderful chefs and people who I meet across my travels in Malaysia. Join, you know, find out the masala chalk and find out the funny boy. Funny, P-U-N-N-Y, funny boy. And uh, yeah, and uh, make good friendships and make good, lasting, deep friendships so that we can learn and grow from each other. Thank you so much. I love you. Uh, thank you for the great September month uh, that you showered me with so much love on my birthday and the, you know, the birthday messages that continue. Um, thank you for being there and for being the great support, you know, that uh, I really appreciate. Thank you so much. Have a great night and bye-bye. See you next Friday. Ciao.